Hello, everybody. Welcome to Worship Today at Trinity Lutheran Church in Litchfield Park, Arizona. We're glad that you're with us. Advent is here. There's an excitement in the air. Just this week, in fact, I started burning a Christmas candle, and I'm listening to Advent music, and it always focuses us on the Lord Jesus. Today, as we take a look at the beginning of Advent, we're going to start with the promises of God, that God is faithful, that he keeps his word and promises to us, and that he did send his son, Jesus, to be our savior, to bring us into his family, um, to give us the Holy Spirit, so that we can know and believe and trust in his promises. God's faithfulness is one important way to think about um, our relationship with God, to think about the Christian faith in life, that God has made promises to us and that God will keep his promises to us. That's one of the themes of Advent. All the way through the Old Testament, he promised to send the Messiah, the Savior, and he did. Jesus, born in Bethlehem. So as we get started with Advent this year, we're going to be looking at the faithfulness of God in our lives. Glad you're with us. We'll see you in worship in just a minute. Shall come to you. 
it come and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high and close the path to misery. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Worship Today on this first Sunday in Advent. We gather together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended thee, and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray thee of thy boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you, and in this stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture lesson for today is from Psalm 146. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Do not put your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God. The one who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever who executes justice for the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. The Lord upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever your God, O Zion, to all generations. Alleluia. Our second scripture lesson for today is from Acts chapter 2, beginning at the 22nd verse. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs, that God did through him in your midst, 
as you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pains of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let the Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness in your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus, God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into heaven, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel, therefore, know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. And our gospel lesson for today is from Luke chapter 1, beginning at the fifth verse. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah, and he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both advanced in years. Now, while he was serving as priest before God, when his division was on duty, according to the custom of the priesthood, he was chosen by lot to enter into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him. And, he, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great before the Lord. And he must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things take place because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. And the people were waiting for Zechariah, and they were wondering at the delay in the temple. 
And when he came out, he was unable to speak to them. And they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple. And he kept making signs to them, and but he remained mute. And when his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After these days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she kept herself hidden, saying, Thus the Lord has done for me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among the people. This is the word of our God. We continue now with confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Speak to all Jerusalem of the peace that waits for them. Tell them that their sins are covered, that their warfare now is says I'm God. Comfort those who sit in darkness, groaning from their sorrows alone. Yeah. 
voices cry in the desert far and near calling people to repentance for the kingdom now is here Advent is the beginning of the church year, and today is the first Sunday in Advent. We are now beginning a four-week preparation time that corresponds roughly to the month of December before we celebrate Christmas and the birth of Christ in Bethlehem. The word Advent is a Latin word that comes from church history and it means um, arrival or the coming of someone important, like a king. Advent is a time when we consider the, the coming and the arrival of Jesus, the king, born in Bethlehem to be our savior. It's a time to remember all those Old Testament prophecies which foretold the coming, the arrival, the advent of the Messiah, of the Christ. It's a time of expectation and anticipation, preparation for who Christ is and what he has done for us. There is an excitement in the air in, in, in the time of advent. And one of the themes that is important in advent is the idea of God's faithfulness. That God makes his word, he makes his promises and his word, and they come true. Throughout the Old Testament times, God made promises after one generation to the next that he would send the Messiah, a savior who would save us from our sins. God kept these promises. God kept his word and he sent the Messiah, the Christ, the savior of the world. St. Paul writes about it in Galatians. In chapter four, he says that when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem us who are under the law. One way that you could translate that verse was that at just the right time, God sent forth his son. God has been promising to send the Messiah, the Savior, throughout the Old Testament times. 
And it goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. And God kept those promises alive throughout the generations, throughout the Old Testament times. In fact, it's these promises of the Messiah, the Savior, that's the most important thing in your Old Testament. You might remember some of those promises that God made in those Old Testament times. Remember, it goes back to the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, where God promised Adam and Eve that one of Eve's sons would crush Satan's head. And then generations later, God made a promise to Abraham that one of his descendants would bless the entire earth. God made a promise to Moses that God himself would raise up a prophet that would be like Moses, but that he would speak the very words of life and eternal salvation. God made a promise to King David that one of his descendants would be a great king who would have an eternal kingdom with no end. Through the prophet Isaiah, God promised that the Messiah would be born of a virgin and that he will suffer and die for the sins of the world. Through the prophet Micah, God promised that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem and that he would be the king of the Jews. Through the prophet Jeremiah, God promised that there will be forgiveness of sins in the Messiah, so much so that God will never, ever remember your sins again. Through the prophet Malachi, God promised that there would be a messenger who would come to prepare the way for the Savior. That messenger was John the Baptist. God kept all these promises and many, 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 many more along with these about the coming of the Messiah, the advent of the Savior. God keeps his word. He is faithful. It's one of the major themes of Advent. And it reminds us that God is faithful to us as well. God is faithful to you. He will keep his word and his promises. God's faithfulness is one of the most important ways that you can think about God's work in your life. It's a way to think about how much God loves you and cares about you. God is faithful. He will keep his word and promises. Let me give you two examples today when you think about God's faithfulness in your life. The first is that all of these Advent promises that God kept throughout the Old Testament times and Jesus being born in Bethlehem, what it all means is that you really do have a Savior, one who is sent by God himself to do the work of salvation for you. It's Jesus. He's the promised one that God sent for you in order to rescue you from your sins. Listen to this remarkable verse from Luke chapter 1. Uh, Gabriel, the angel, is speaking to Mary. The angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. All of these descriptions of Jesus in this Luke passage are promises from the Old Testament that are being fulfilled in Jesus. He is the Christ, the Messiah, the promised Savior of the Old Testament times. All of these messianic prophecies 
are fulfilled in Jesus. Luke, in that Luke passage, we also learn that Mary's son is given the name Jesus. That's a name that means savior. And Jesus is even called the son of the most high God. The son of God is a divine title that shows that Jesus is God himself. He has come into the world to rescue you from sin and guilt and death. It's as if God wasn't going to take any chances whatsoever with your salvation. So he himself came down from heaven in order to do the work for you so that you can be 100% certain that your sins are forgiven, that you have peace with God, and that you have eternal life. It's the life, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ that guarantees that you are saved, that you are forgiven, that you are rescued from death, that you will live forever in the kingdom of heaven. In the Lord Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, who is also the son of the most high God, you can have assurance of your salvation. You can be absolutely confident in eternal life. God himself has come down from heaven to do the work for you and in your place. A second way to think about God's faithfulness in your life is that God makes all kinds of promises to you as you live your Christian faith and life. As you live each day loving God and being faithful in your vocations. If God made a promise to you in Holy Scripture, we know that he will keep it because God is faithful. Because God is faithful and we know the promises of God, we look to him for all good things and we turn to him in times of trouble. God's promises are what comfort us and strengthen us. They guide us each day. They keep us focused on the Lord our God and his love, his grace, his kindness, his compassion, his mercy for us. You know the promises of God. Let me remind you of some of them. The Lord promises in scripture that every single day, he is watching over your life. He promises to defend you from all evil. He promises to provide your daily bread. He promises to make everything work for good in your life. He promises to listen and to answer your prayers. He promises to strengthen you when you are weak to comfort you when you are uh, when you mourn to encourage you when you are down to guide and direct every step that you take to empower you to godly living he assures you that your sins are forgiven and that you belong to him god is our refuge and strength an ever-present help in times of trouble. The Lord is good. He's a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. These are promises that God makes to you because he loves you. He is faithful. That means he's gonna keep these words and these promises to you as you live each day in faith, focused on Christ as a believer in the Lord. The, prom the problem is, though, that sin enters our life and we start to doubt these promises. Maybe you don't believe these promises. 
You talk yourself out of these promises. Maybe you don't even know them or you forgot the promises of God. And when that happens, you end up going your own way. You listen to your sinful nature. You get stressed and depressed and overwhelmed by the problems of this life. You let the world influence you. You listen to its ways. You follow the devil's temptations. It's a continual spiral that, that seems to never end. That's not God's will for you. Rather, he calls you to repent of all of that, to confess your unfaithfulness and to trust that he is faithful and that he is just and he will forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. God will never, ever remember your sins because of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is faithful to you. Believe God's word and his promises. Through faith in Christ and the forgiveness of sins that is freely given to you, you learn to keep God's promises in front of you. You are empowered to trust them and rely on them and depend on them. You learn them, you write them down, you memorize them so that no matter what you're facing, no matter what the stress is in your life, no matter how much worry or fear is in front of you, keep God's promises right there with you because God is faithful. He will keep his promises and his word to you. Look to the Lord for all good things. Turn to him in times of trouble. He is faithful to you. He keeps his word. It's one of the things that we learn during Advent, that our God is faithful and that he does keep his word. You know, as you're thinking about God's promises, not only do we learn them and write them down and memorize them and keep them in front of us, but you can also share these promises with the people in your life. We live in a world that's full of lies and deception and brokenness. And there are people in our life who, who are broken, who are listening to the lies and the deception. They don't have hope. They don't know salvation. They are living in guilt because they don't know forgiveness. They need to hear about the God who keeps his word and promises about the God who sent his son to bring hope to the world, life, forgiveness, and eternal salvation. You have those words of eternal life, those words of hope. You know the promises of God. Share those promises with the people in your life. When you witness to others in your encouraging words, when you pray with others, in your counsel to others, in your daily conversations. We talk about a hundred different things with people. Make God's promises one of those things that you talk about in your normal everyday conversations. People need to hear about the God who keeps his word and promises. They need hope. They need forgiveness. They need life that only Christ can give. You can share God's promises. You can help other people see that God is faithful and he keeps his word. So today we start Advent. There's an excitement in the air with, with Advent. And one of the themes that, that is front and center in Advent is God's faithfulness. God is faithful and he kept all of his Old Testament promises to send a savior, the Messiah, the Christ, who was born in Bethlehem and given the name Jesus. God is faithful 
And he promises that because of Jesus, your sins are forgiven, that you belong to the Lord, that he is right there with you every moment of every day, and that you have a home in heaven. God is faithful, and you can trust every single one of his promises that he makes to you in Holy Scripture. They will guide you and comfort you and strengthen you each and every day. As we begin Advent today, we thank God that he is faithful and that he keeps his word and promises. Amen. We pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness and that you keep your promises to us. First and foremost, we thank you that you kept your promise to send a Savior, your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for his work, which he has earned our salvation. Send us your Holy Spirit so that we may always trust your word and have confidence in all of your promises, knowing that you are faithful and true. As we learn, hear and learn your word and promises, help us to remain faithful to you, to love you with all of our heart, to love our neighbor as Christ has loved us. We pray this in Jesus, our Savior's name. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Have a great week. We'll see you next week in worship.